Hi, in the last video we talked about predicates and quantifiers. In this video, let's see how we can form new, new predicates using connectives. Okay, so in, the, in propositional logic we talked about connectives. So basically given two propositions P, Q, we can um, combine them to get a new proposition uh, by for example taking implies, right, P implies Q or you can take P or Q and you can take P and Q, right. And if you have a single proposition P, then you can say negation P. It's, it itself is an operation, right? So these connectives um, take old propositions and give new, uh, combine them to give new propositions. In the same way, in fact, the exact same way, we can combine two different, two or more different predicates to get uh, new predicates using the same connectives, right? So this is um, analogous to saying that you know, think of this or and implies negation as arithmetic operations plus multiplication and so on. And then uh, if you think it that way, then in propositional logic, you are doing operations on numbers and in predicate logic, you are doing operations on functions, right? So because predicates are something which depends on variables. So, um, so if you have P of X and Q of X, you can still talk about P of X implies Q of X as a predicate. So if you put a particular value of X, you'll get a you'll get a proposition, in, right? Similarly, if you have uh, P of X Y and R of Z, you can have P of X Y or R of Z, or you can have negation R of Z implies P of X Y. Okay, and these variables X Y Z will have appropriate domains, of course. So we can also use all the laws of propositional logic to simplify and manipulate mm, these uh, compound propositions. Well, we can say they are compound predicates now because they are, they involve variables, right? So once you instantiate x, y, z, you get you get compound propositions. So in this context, let, let's look at an example. Suppose take the statement that if x, y are odd numbers, then x plus y is an even number, okay? So we have uh, two different predicates here. You have x, y are odd numbers as one predicate and x plus y is an even number as another predicate. So you can also write this x, y are odd numbers are as two different predicates. You can say x is an odd number and y is an odd number. It doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna say this is p of x comma y and this is uh, q of x comma y. So this statement is saying that p of x comma y implies q of x comma y. So often in mathematics you just don't uh, use just predicates, you want to use quantifiers with them. For example, with this statement you want to say that uh, for all integers x and y, if x, is, x and y are odd numbers, then x plus y is an even number. So that's the sort of statement you want to say. So really you're saying that this is for all x, for all y where the domain of x and y in this context are integers and this this, this makes sense. Okay. So in this example, uh, both the variables x and y has quantifier, right? So here we are saying for all x, for all y, p of x, y implies q of x, y. But this is not necessarily the case in general. So you can have predicates for which some of the variables are quantified. That is, there is a quantifier for all of that exists uh, and the other variables are not quantified. So the variables which are quantified, we call them bound variables. And the variables which are not quantified, we call them free variables. So, so let's look at a more general example. So let's say we have for all x1, there exists x2, there exists x3 for all x4. And then we have p of x1, x2, up to x6. So in this one, um, so we have a predicate in six variables and four of the variables are bound right bound by quantifiers um, which are x1 x2 x3 x4 and the variables x5 and x6 are free variables let me write another one also okay so notice something here if you have all your variables as bound it's actually a proposition so if you have for example in this case if you have for all x1 for all x2 etc etc for all x6 so you, you bound all the variables that are there and you say p of x1 to x6 then this whole thing is a proposition 
and similar with the previous one for all x for all y p of x y implies k of x y is a proposition right so um, and if you drop any of these suppose you bound only five of the six and there is one free variable there is at least one free variable then it's a predicate then it's not necessarily a proposition although although there are constant predicates so there are predicates which are always true or always false um, but potentially it varies with a, a variable okay so for example let me just write it down so if i say for all x1 for all x2 and for all x5 p of x1 to x6 so this is a statement which is this is a predicate which still depends on x6 so it's not necessarily a proposition right so let's look at an example of this sort um, let's take a predicate s of x y uh, where x and y has domain to be integers so s of x y is the statement that x times y is greater than or equal to zero so x and y are integers and x times y is greater than or equal to zero so obviously this is not true for all for all integers x and y for example if you have positive x and a negative y this is false right but uh, let's examine this a little bit with quantifiers so if, if i say for all x uh, s of x y right so this is a statement which depends on y so let me call this p of y right so this is a statement which uh, this is a predicate statement which depends only on the variable y because the variable x is bound right so when when you write p of zero this is true of course right but if you write uh, p of two then this is saying that for all x um, two times x is greater than or equal to zero obviously this is not true x can be any any integer for example if x equal to negative one this is false right so you can give a counter example for an instance of x where this is false and therefore p of 2 is false so there are two two different truth values for different values of x, uh, values of y here okay so th this is an example of a predicate um, in which one of the variables is bound and the other variable is not bound and this predicate in, in fact depends on the value of the variable okay